back to the ESL Hearthstone Legendary Series. My name is TJ Osmond, Cutie Sanders, and I'm joined by Frodan. How you doing, man? It's a new day, uh, but it's the last day of the Redemption Tournament, and this is where we find out who gets the eighth spot to the LAN. Mm -hmm. It's going to be exciting times once again, TJ. Yesterday was a very fun day so far. Uh, I've enjoyed all of this week yeah. of the Redemption Tournament. It's been really fun. Yesterday we saw Roger. Early in the week we saw uh, Trump and um, Lead Paint. Uh, qualified through groups A through C mm -hmm. of the Redemption Tournament. And today, like you said, we're going to find one more. You can see the players on your screen there. Uh, Kaldi, Tom, Limijux, Too Wet, Oskaka, and Amaz. Of course, we, we showed Lead Paint there, but since he qualified earlier in the week, uh, he won't be participating today. So the matchup that he had, which was versus Oskaka, uh, will not uh, be happening. So we should probably take uh, one more look at the format for the Legendary Series uh, Redemption Tournament if there's still some people who are tuning in for the first time. That's right. We're going to be playing Best of Five Conquest format. We'll explain a little bit of that in just a second. Uh, today's the last day. It's May 17th, and it's the last seven-player bracket. The winner of each bracket goes to LAN. Very straightforward, and uh, the LAN's going to be happening in June 5th to 7th for $25,000. Now, the, the important thing to keep in mind is that today we have six players because one of the seven players that was supposed to qualify ended up, or sorry, was well, supposed to compete actually ended up qualifying. That was lead paint two days ago. And so he is automatically removed from this bracket, meaning that whoever was matched up against him gets an automatic win. And I believe that is Oskaka. Yeah. And of course, uh, it is Conquest throughout the whole Redemption Tournament, as well as the entire Legendary Series. Uh, Conquest, best of five. Every player brings three unique decks. In order to win the match, they must win one game with each of their three decks. The winning player chooses a new deck, of course. And if the losing player can opt to stick with the same deck they just lost with mm -hmm. or switch it up. And, of course, the whole thing is blind pick. That's right. So uh, pretty much the same as we've been doing uh, so far. But if you guys have seen a lot of the highlight reels from uh, Silent Storm and his crazy plays to uh, the qualification process of Lead Paint and his ridiculous soul fires uh, to watching Trump versus Savitz in the very end of the first day, we've had a lot of memorable moments. Uh, but today is also promising to do the same. I do know that a lot of these players are very strong. And I think Group D is probably one of the most stacked. Uh, people looked at Group A as potentially being really tough as well. A and D seems to be a good way to start and end the week, in my opinion. Yeah, and as we get closer to that land finals, we also want to take this opportunity to get a, give a big shout-out to our sponsors for Season 2 of the Legendary Series. Plantronics and Gigabyte are helping us make a lot of the fun things that we're able to do here at the Legendary Series possible. So if you guys want to support us, and uh, support those guys and, and let them know that you appreciate them being a part of esports and a part of Hearthstone esports specifically. Then head to those links you just saw below and uh, maybe purchase some Plantronics headsets, some Gigabyte motherboards, and uh, let them know that you appreciate them. Another way you can support what we're doing is to stay engaged in the conversation on social media, hashtagging HLS, tweeting at ESL Hearthstone, tweeting at AzumoCutie, at Frodan. Tell us what you guys uh, want to see, how you guys are enjoying it, any feedback. Uh, because this is one of the few things that ESL is actually usually doing and putting out on their mm -hmm. own uh, on their own ventures and projects. So uh, definitely help contribute and stay engaged on the socials. And of course, we're still doing a giveaway. You can head to ESL.gg slash redemption series. Uh, follow the instructions on the screen and you'll be entered in a raffle to win not only some classic packs, but also some Plantronics headsets. And if you do end up winning, Make sure you tweet out and yeah. let everybody know that you were the the winner. Yeah, I haven't seen too many people be really proud of what they've won yet. They should be uh, ecstatic considering that mm. this is some of the coolest stuff that's been able to be given away for the season. Mm. So uh, definitely get on that. Yeah, before we jump into the matches, we actually had uh, a chance to sit down and talk with some of the players that are going to be competing uh, today and ask them about the run through the Legendary Series and uh, what they hope to accomplish in the future. So uh, let's take a look at what these guys had to say. It's, it's hard. I've, I've, you know, that that feeling of actually winning a huge tournament. You know, that that adrenaline that you go through. You know, I've had that happen twice before uh, in my start in Hearthstone careers, and it's just there's nothing compared to it. You know, satisfied with it because I lost pretty early. Uh -huh. I had a really great run through the qualifiers, and I expected myself to do better during the actual legendary series, but I didn't, and now I want to improve on that. This time. One thing that I'm good at is I don't really get um, too salty about like bad RNG, so I don't really like 
tilt very easily. And uh, I tend to not make many mistakes. I'm, I think I, I'm pretty level-headed when I play, so I don't go on tilt when I ladder or play in tournaments. Yeah, I can be anyone. As long as I don't make any huge misplays, like, I'm okay with, you know, whatever outcome. Yeah, I prepared and I think I'm ready for it. I think I can beat them on a good day, yeah. I will win this, yeah. Mainly just, yeah, I want to bring something that's like my own flavor. Seems like a lot of confident, level-headed players in Group D. Yep, that's right. Uh, it doesn't seem like there's too many people rocking the boat with... You know, the really flair personality of, like, getting upset all the time and super emotional. And that could work to their benefit uh, as we are coming down to a high-pressure situation. Mm -hmm. This is the last spot before the last chance qualifiers happening next week, DJ. Yeah, and for the players that are uh, participating today that are outside of North America, this is their last shot mm -hmm. uh, to make it to a Legendary Series Land Final. So let's take one more look at the bracket for today to see exactly which matches uh, we are going to be seeing taking place. First matchup, of course, is going to be Kaldi uh, versus Tom60229, who said in his interview that we just saw that he will beat everybody. Well, after that, he we'll... will win. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. After that, we'll see Limmy Jones, said. who we also saw versus Too Wet, who uh, this will be his second redemption group um, that he's participating in since he qualified for the Legendary Series twice. And then you mentioned, you talked about Lead Paint, who uh, qualified for the land final early in the week. So he was supposed to make it, but um, since he qualified, he gets a Oskaka gets that walkover victory versus Lead Paint. And uh, Amaz and Oskaka get those automatic seeds to the semifinals. So we'll be seeing them later in the day. That's right. So uh, it's coming down to the last opportunities for these guys. Uh, I'm looking forward to the first match, Caldi versus Tom. Uh, these are two really solid players that's... Just, you know, in the middle of the pack, whenever you see their name, they're like, oh, yeah, they're they're pretty good at Hearthstone. Uh, and then you think about things like, oh, but, you know, how are they able to make the runs? Or, you know, have they had any significant tournament victories? Not necessarily. You know, Caldi's done well. He won that Dingit Invitational where he was able to get, like, a you know, a small win for, like, yeah. 1,000 euro. Uh, Tom's won two qualifiers, done pretty well in Taiwan. Uh, over on that side of the world, but he hasn't been able to translate too much in the West. But one thing for sure is that Tom is a warrior. He goes through every qualifier and gets pretty dang far every time. Like, I'm talking, like, top four. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, like, if he either makes it through or he falls short by, like, one round or two rounds. In a lot of ways, he draws similarity to Oskaka, where it's, you know, on the online playing field, he seems to do pretty well. And he's yet to have, like, a true breakout tournament victory. Although Scott Guy got pretty close, winning, almost winning Six Story Cup. Yeah. And both these players had very similar runs through their Legendary Series weeks. Uh, they both finished uh, tied for fifth place in their week, in their group. And they both had a very similar game score with uh, Caldi having seven wins, six losses, and Tom having six wins and seven losses. Excuse me. Uh, Caldi actually went on to lose against the eventual winner, Life Coach, um, Tom actually lost in the fifth place match to Roger, who uh, ended up losing in that week as well, but qualified yesterday for the Legendary Series Land Finals. So, uh, pretty interesting stuff for these guys for their performances for their regular season Legendary Series week. And first matchup is going to be Warrior versus Druid. And All right. Grim Page Warrior. So, it looks like we're going to start off with a matchup that will be a little bit tougher for Tom. Grim Patrons generally flip the board a little bit too aggressively for Druid to seize it back immediately. And we start off with a reasonable hand for Kaldi. It's not the worst. It's not the best. You generally want the card draw, but at least he has tools, so that way he doesn't get completely overrun if his opponent had to innervate. Uh, fortunately for Kaldi, Tom has no such thing, and he's not the exact happiest with that hand. Yeah. Every time you have to hero power on turn two as a druid, you're slightly sad. Wild growth, it's one of the ways that you can uh, apply a lot of pressure early to Grimpagian warriors, force them to use their cards inefficiently. Ooh. All right. Well, there it is. I mean, he wasn't going to play Keeper of the Grove anyways mm -hmm. on an empty board. It's just too valuable against a, a classic warrior. Tom's nodding his head like, yep. <laughs> Quite a bit happier. Yeah, he's a pro-druid player. Mm -hmm. 
All right, now uh, you can start gaining the board momentum a little bit. Lothab shuts down a couple of things. There's not really many things that you pull, many spells you play on four though as warrior. Outside of if yeah. he's at control, it's shield block or something. But in the Grim Patron, not unless you can like get good battle rage early on, or if your opponent wanted to coin. Yeah, it makes the Lothab a little bit tougher to deal with, just because. You have to like attack into it with a weapon and trait in the Frothing Berserker as opposed to like just right. using Inner Rage to try and uh, trade in. So there is some benefit to it, but it's mostly for the body. It's mostly so that he curves out well. Yep. In Fair order enough. to challenge what's on the board. Does he want to set up Death Spite so that way he can start getting better things with Acolyte in the futures. I think so. Um, Grim Pagian also on the following turn in case he wanted to. Yeah. Just that you give up your Frothing Berserker. You can coin Whirlwind as well. You can play Grim Pagian next turn, attack him with Death Bite, coin Whirlwind, and have four Grim Pagians on the board. Was there any uh, leeway in like attacking face with the Frothing and then letting the Lothab trade in? Because that's pretty clear what the druid wanted to do, or is it too easy just to have it swiped and then Yeah. I think it's then too you have to double attack. Too easy to um, remove it and it's also one of the we reasons you or ways you lose in this matchup is by taking too much damage. Because like a lot of your removal is weapons. It's not like control warrior where you have shield slams as well and ways to gain health. So one of the main ways that you can um, beat the Grim Patron Warriors just by applying a lot of pressure and getting them in combo range before they have a chance to get big combos of their own. So he doesn't want to take too much damage. On the that other is a absolutely feeble turn to six. <laughs> like, you just keep with the Grove of the face for two damage, and now your opponent uses Death Bite very effectively. Uh, does he set up the Grim Patron here? He can go for a lot on the board already because he has the Whirlwind with the coin. And that already might spell the beginning of the end of this matchup. Yeah, especially since he, he's used the Keeper. So that means he can't use the Keeper to take out like a two health Grim Patron. Because the only way that a Druid deals with a lot of Grim Patrons is if they like spot removal all of them. Like Keeper one, Wrath another, and Wrath another. Or like Keeper one and then swipe the three health one and the one health one. Um, yeah. But now it's going to be so tough because all he has is a Wrath. Uh, he he also have force of nature, which could which could be pretty useful. But two of these grim patrons are going to be out of range of uh, being able to be killed with uh, force of nature, and that opens up opportunities for Kaldi to just spawn like a near infinite amount of grim patrons following a couple turns if he has more war one effects. Well, I mean, Tom can drop minions that don't let the grim patrons spawn too much and force him to trade onto the board a little bit more. Drawing to scenarios and Harrison, which is a useful card. We've seen a lot of Harrisons over the past couple days. Yes. In a lot of classes, we've seen it in Warlock, Druid, Warriors. Even a Swamp Ooze once in a while. A Swamp Ooze. Yeah, we go back and look at Lead Paint's run to make it to the Legendary Series Land Finals. What? His yeah, Dragon both. Warlock was filled with tech cards. Harrison, Ooze, Kazan Mystic, Double BGH. How is the best way to deal with this Ancient of Lore? You're a little worried about the possibility of, you know, combo. You can't just drop a weapon, take a little bit of damage, or like hit face, and then just try to rush him down. Yeah. You can attack him with it with Death Bite and sacrifice one of the Grim Patrons, like the one health Grim Patron. Mm -hmm. And that way you set up next turn to where your opponent is sort of forced to. Um, ooh, okay, he's going to oh, use. Oh, that's ooh. clever. Yeah. I like that. So using the Death Bite, Death Rattle effect to create more Grim Patrons. That's a full board, right? Indeed. Oh, sorry, I forgot about the one that uh, the casual that team. gang died. That's right. <laughs> the thing about having a full board is sometimes cards like Swipe that don't aren't as bad anymore because there's just too many Grim Patrons that it won't spawn. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is always troublesome. This is 18 damage. Plus the uh, the fire war axe, so he cuts that down. Whoa! It's still a pretty oh bold move to go for Harrison Jones when you're staring at 18 damage on the board. 
Especially considering the only other play he had after Harrison, if he didn't pick up an innervate, was Wrath. Well, that would at least still give him a, a chance, a fighting chance. And remember, he has combo. Yeah. And what would it tell if you just ended up going for, like, some guaranteed damage? Like, if you charge this Druid the Claw, put him in at 12, so that way, at best, he could, like, armor up, and then you combo for the next turn. Mm -hmm. It's not guaranteed at all. It's probably not even a good play. Yeah, then your opponent only has to find two damage in order right. to kill you, which is... It's just too risky. Really easy for uh, Grim Patron Warrior. Goes for the consistent play. Absolutely. Kaldi does not have the game ending damage just yet. He has 12. He's six short. He can gain two more through the No Mission Vendor through the Warsong Commander, but it's not. It's not guaranteed. Mm -hmm. Harrison's also problematic because of the combo. So mm -hmm. if you want to play Sludge Belcher to be de defensive, you could. You could also play the Novish Inventor, evaluate what happens, and then trade off a couple patrons, keep the board, and then um, still stay above combo range if you float 16 to 18 health. You've seen one Innervate. Do you need to play around double combo? Uh, maybe at least the bottom line Innervate combo, so you have 15. Mm -hmm. But I don't think double combo is always something that you have to play around. Um, if you really want to play around it, you play Sludge Belcher and trade the patrons, in, so there's no chance. Yeah. This way he still preserves one of his patrons, but takes some, some damage off the board and still plays around. Yep, the Force Nature Savage rule. Yeah. Well, this is a little bit poor. He might have to just use the combo trade everything now. And it's not going to be uh, a point of killing anymore for his opponent. Instead, it's just going to simply attack everything here. But it does clear off the Grim Patron, or so he thinks. <laughs> Until TJ. The second Grim Patron. Well, yeah. I guess it's more like the 12th Grim Patron. Yeah, it's it's you know it's a, it's a second grim patron that comes out here effectively on the card and uh, controls stay of the board, but still no rush, right? You can set up armor smith and sludge belcher, or uh, you can start hacking away with the weapon because you know the weapon's actually going to be good damage, and sludge belcher. Yeah. Either way, I think I'm in favor of using some kind of sludge belcher here to to gain board advantage. He doesn't really have proactive plays here. Uh, it doesn't have any way to get cards off the Acolyte. doesn't have any way to spawn extra Grim Patrons. Fire Warax in the face can start putting on good damage, but it's blocked by Taunt. Alright, so he just lost some card draw. Yeah. And he goes for the weapon. He's not afraid of... Uh, he's not afraid of dying to his Force Ninja Savage anymore. That is a pretty big defensive wall, though. Yeah. Sludge Belcher and Drew the Claw in tandem. Yeah. Scenarius can backfire uh, in this matchup. Just because the 2 2 taunts, unless you're using it as a plus 2 2 to all your creatures, the 2 2 taunts can be fodder for Grim Patrons. Also, that 2 damage is not really that tough for Warriors to get through a lot of the time. Right. A will in effect, for example, with the Death Spite can disarm it, and then a Frothing Berserker gets way out of control. Yeah. Speaking of which, Frothing Berserker gets drawn, and Dr. Boom, unfortunately, a little bit too expensive for this turn. But he's still got the Sludge Belcher. He's still got a lot, of, a lot to get through here. Yeah. He's got to find a way to get through the 1-2 uh, okay. Slime, as well as the Druid of the Claw, and then whatever's going to come out from... Tom. Tom might be on the verge of stabilizing if he can find a way to deal with this board. And if Caldy yeah. doesn't have much card draw for the next couple turns. Well, I have to imagine he's going to drop this big game hunter, but then that makes dealing with Dr. Boom a little bit more problematic still. Yeah. And he has to go for the heal, right? There's, there's no opportunity at all to go for a card draw. No. I mean, he's got plays for the next couple turns. Right. So... Now, the challenge with Dr. Boom, even though it's great, is that there's so many minions 
I think at that point, Scenarius just buffs 2-2 two -two across all minions, right? Not yeah. just 2-2. Two -two. Yeah. Considering that not only does it create the stronger minions and, like, Ancient of War trades into it, but uh, it plays less around... It plays less around Grim Patron, or plays more around Grim Patron combos. I mean, Druid realistically might be able to start swinging this around soon. Yeah, I, he made it through a few of the aggressive pushes from Caldi, which usually they come in waves. Usually they have one aggressive push with Grim Patrons, maybe a second gr aggressive push with Grim Patrons. And then unless they're drawn through a lot of their deck, they have a really big, um, like, lull, a really big soft spot. Mm hmm where they're just waiting for additional pieces because they're using most of their pieces to hmm. buff up the first couple waves, like the first wave of Grim Patrons, the second wave of Grim Patrons, or Frothing Berserker. And then they're sort of just waiting on their card draw mechanics in order to find more. So this is the window for Tom to find a victory in this game. Yeah, if this, uh, if this little slime wasn't there, I believe that would actually be lethal. But yeah. Unfortunately, he's not able to secure that. Ends up taking down Dr. Boom, and now Warrior needs to draw into that execute. That is so crucial. Or Boom Boss need to do magical, wondrous things. Mm. Well, for starters, sniping that big game hunter that's been buffed would be excellent. Yeah. With the Boom Boss. I mean, he has to, because there's lethal damage on the board. Mm -hmm. Or if the Boom Bot can destroy the Dree of the Claw for four damage. Yeah. Either would be great. He has to kill one thing from the board, or else he loses on the spot. Yeah, hitting Scenarius or the face. Oh, maybe what if he just does four damage to the face? Let's do that. Oh, oh that was the worst outcome. Oh, he can kill uh, with the cool task. Yeah, not not the worst outcome possible, but um, still not preferable. Now it's a savage roar from winning. As well as uh, another Force of Nature. He's got 12. Swipe would be good. Yep. Drake could hy hypothetically just fish to win the game. Or he can go for the safe play. Go for a Dr. Boom and secure the board. Both are really powerful here. Drake finish. All Swipe right. it is. And that should be able to wrap it up, right? Yeah. Oh, wait, no. Uh, 11 plus 5. Oh, no, 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 he's actually a little Ooh, short. He can't, he can't, he can't hero, can't, power. Uh, hero power, that's yeah. right. Ah, it's too bad. Okay, well, we'll swipe the face, put him down to within striking distance on the next turn. I don't think there's really a draw here that we can get. Warsong Commander's not going to do anything. Yeah, if it was commanding chat Warsong Commander. That'd be <laughs> ridiculous. If you, could draw two, if you could draw two cards in the turn, and they just happen to be the perfect card. All right, well, Tom is going to take game number one after having a pretty rough start. It seemed like Caldi was in a great position after yeah. getting a full board of Grim Patrons. But Tom navigated that really well. He's going to take a, a lead in this first match. A pretty important win, I think, too, because Caldi has Warlock and Rogue, and those two decks also can target the Druid, Yep, which... It's a very big vulnerable point. I feel like Druid seems to be the the, the class that people are targeting, or or they they just happen to have as a very good matchup against in Conquest. Which if you single out a deck and have matchups across your entire lineup that's good against that class, then you win. And Druid seems to be picked a lot despite that. In fact, let's take a look. It's the second most popular class today. Yeah, Warlock. Every single player warlock has a Warlock. Has, everyone has a Warlock, but not everyone has Druid or Hunters or Warriors. Uh, Druid's the second most popular class. Warrior's the third. Hunter's the fourth. Uh, tie with Rogue. Mm -hmm. Not as much class diversity today as we saw yesterday. We're missing a couple. Mm -hmm. Missing Priest, missing Shaman. Yeah, I'm just uh, taking a look down again just to make sure I'm not giving out false information. But we have three Warriors, four Druids, six Warlocks, two Rogues. A hunter and a mage. Interesting that hunters... Oh, sorry, two hunters. Yeah. Interesting that two people are only bringing hunter. One of them is Limajux and uh, a Maz. I think hunter is... People have been so adamant about how strong hunter is. And I I'm really am surprised that a lot of people aren't bringing it. Especially with the popularity of Warlock. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess Handlock does have... Can have decent matchups against... Uh, like, faster hunters... 
maybe even the hybrid hunter, but mid range hunter, I think, just does really well. But we'll have to see how that's going to play out. We're about to jump into the next match between Caldy and Tom60229. Or as that's they call right. him on the streets, Dan. That's right. Tom60229, for people who are assuming that TJ's racist is my doppelganger. Mm -hmm. We've established that, so it's okay for him to joke around like that. All the information that Dan just presented you with came from Dan himself, so. I didn't even see the resemblance until Dan pointed it out to me. That's right. how good of a Samaritan. Well, you're a good person, TJ. Much better than Twitch chat. Warrior versus what appears to be Handlock. So Caldy's going to queue up the Grimpage Warrior once again. You think so? You think this is Handlock? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, yeah I think so. It's good I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and uh take a wild guess here and say that there's at least a 50% chance that this is him. <laughs> what about the chance that there's a legendary dragon? 0. 0%, Zero Dan. Yeah. Well, it's funny cuz you said what appears to be Handlock and I'm like, "Well, I feel like there's nothing really else we could see that would indicate that it's not Handlock." It'd be like what, like Mountain Giant is the big defining thing. Sometimes you see Twilight Drakes, and you can see, eh, maybe like Combo. Mm -hmm. You could see Big Game Hunter, you know, same thing, Combo Lock. Mm -hmm. You could see, like, you know, Sludge Belcher is like, well, still, you know, that doesn't say anything. Well, maybe I don't, he's playing Demon stuff. I don't see Race, Dan, so I can't differentiate between Molten Sea and Mountain Giants. And Clockwork. So you don't see color? No, I don't. Mm. Well, I feel bad for you. Watching all that HD TV and 4K resolution in black and white. Mm -hmm. It's quite the shame. Yep. Now, Caldi has three weapons. Is that a little much or is that okay considering that you can use some of it as burn? It's a little much. Because hand diversity is actually pretty important. And you need card draw, is the big thing. But you said you didn't see race. Now you want diversity. Humans are diverse <laughs> by nature, Dan. They are. They are. This Twilight Drake is going to put out a lot of pain. But you can deal it with two strokes of the Death Spite. Mm -hmm. Seems pretty gentle to call it a stroke. Yeah, that's true. Maybe a chop. Yeah. Or a swing. Mm -hmm. Or a stab. A shank. A swift hit. A drive-by. Well, uh, I guess he's looking for cool opportunities once again to activate the Death Bite before he ends up... Uh, oh. Blood and plunder. Well, in case he needs to actually get some whirlwind effects, but it doesn't look mm -hmm. like it. Apologies, as a, a note was passed to me. Mm -hmm. um, the Battle Rage here ends up getting three cards. Pretty effective. Very effective, in fact. Flood and Thunder. Yeah, he's actually a weatherman. Mm -hmm. Did you know that? Yeah. Dread Corsair in his uh, former occupation prior to becoming a pirate. Yeah, I thought about it a lot. It's kind yeah. of what happens in... Um, you know, one day you're just working a normal TV anchor job, just yeah. predicting news, and then realize, you know what I feel like doing today? I feel like pillaging some villages and stealing all their treasure. Yeah. And meteorology is actually a really good field for a pirate to go into. It's a good skill set it's to true. have. It's true. If you can read the weather, you can fare the seas much better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just ask Cherry Warrior. <laughs> yep. Do you know who Cherry Warrior is? Is uh he's actually a really good arena player, and he's he is isn't basically he a, a classical Viking. Isn't he a part of one of the organizations? Uh, well, he does stream, and I believe he's about to hit, or he just hit his ten thousandth arena win. That's a lot. That is an insane amount. How many arena wins do you have, Dan? S across both of my accounts, any in EU, probably like two thousand. Oh wow. I used to play a lot of arena. That's how I got my collection as big as it is now. But I don't even have any golden cards because I'm casual. Mm. I'll have to check after this how many arena ones I have. 
just so I can show you up. Or be shamed. One of the two. You'll probably show me up. I don't have that. I don't have that impressive golden cards. You don't want to play anything that has five health that just gets immediately sniped by this uh, Death Spite number two. So the Twilight Drake seems preferable here. However, if your opponent has an Execute, he controls the board very commandingly. So it's a, a little bit of a nerve-wracking moment. Also, something important to note is that Kaldi does not have the most life available to him. He's at 14. He's taking quite a beating over the course of this game. More only on turn seven. This matchup is super tough for Compassion Warriors because it's hard for them to find a balance between, one, dealing with early threats, two, once they deal with early threats, it's hard for them to muster pressure, and three, once they start getting pressure, it's hard for them to make the final push to get through any type of walls that the handlock is going to put out. Uh, they only have limited amounts of removal with executes. A lot of their... their Threat engines are from being able to bump Grim Patrons into sub to attack creatures with like Warsong Commander. It's One true. of the main win conditions here is to make large frothing berserkers on a single turn with Warsong Commanders and pushing in for like a single turn lethal. Like a 15 plus damage frothing berserker to the face. But even that can be hard to do. Is it too idealistic just to attack and play Dr. Boone here? Like, you're just going to be taking too much damage? Could be. Alright, so... Kali ends up uh, going for a really defensive play here. Cool Taskmaster and... and no mission Venner. Tom has 4... 10... 10 damage right now. 10 damage and... Still some threats here. He's got Emperor Thorstein. Thorstein uh, might up. be really strong. Not because so of the... Um... Okay, well, Lothev also shuts down spells. If you're going to push for lethal, that actually makes a lot of sense, too. Mm -hmm. Considering that you still allow your opponent to respond. I was thinking Thorstein will allow you to squeeze in, like, a bunch of combos the following turn, too, for a lot cheaper. Yeah. Lothab does make a lot more sense, though, if you want to push for a win. And we've actually seen this a few times, where players have opened with Grim Page and Warrior and struggled to find a victory with it in their first couple matches. Well, because people are targeting it, you know? It's yeah. one of those classes that you understand that it's so strong, which is so funny because we just had a discussion with a coworker prior to this about how Grim Page is just too strong, and we're like, mm. well, no, there's people starting to actually counter it. It's like, no, I'm so glad it's going to get nerfed. It's like, well, it seems in this scenario, Grim Patron can't even win. Yeah. It's just when you lose to it, you don't like the way you lose to it. it AKA QQ more. <laughs> <laughs> it's just when it first like burst, Wine, baby. <laughs> bursted out into the competitive scene. It was new, and it just so happened that um, the meta, uh, it was great against the decks that were popular in the meta which was sort of like a double whammy. That's why people thought it was, or still think it's one of the strongest decks and will probably still think it's one of the strongest decks until people find ways to, to deal with it. This seems... Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if this ended up being the, the best attack, but it looks like Kali ran out of time just thinking about how much damage he could do. Oh, uh, and in the end, he just needs to run this Frothy Berserker into the tree. That kind of stinks. Yeah. That's a lot of wasted damage, but yeah. there was no other way around it, and that is going to be game number two going over to Tom. To Tom, 6-0, 6 0 2 2 9, 2 -2 -9. Yeah. It's going to be a it's song every made day about Tom. When you meet a username who has more numbers in it than letters. Yeah. Usually, you kind of end it with, like, maybe you replace a letter with the number, like instead of Tom, it's T0M. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, um, instead of like the A, you type a four, like Hani. But, um, you know, Tom spent all out. Mm -hmm. Cross as well. 60229. But at least Cross still has more letters than numbers. Cross 7224. They like their twos, the double two. Yeah, it's, I, I don't know. I think Tom says his, his background is from his zip code when he was young. So it's like he wants to represent his hometown. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. It's 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 really fun because now it's every time I see that number I think about him. All right. Well, Tom only has to find a win with Warrior now. 
Mm -hmm. And I haven't seen what type of warrior it is, but if it's control warrior, then he's in a pretty good spot against the um, the rest of the lineup here from Calder, who has Grim Patient Warrior, Rogue, yeah. and then, I mean, those are it's strong against those he's two. He's switching. He's switching. He says, you know what? Uh, if that's Control Warrior, I'm in big trouble. I'm yeah. going to switch over to Handlock or Zoo. He's going to have to beat it eventually if it is Control Warrior. Yeah, this is not looking that good for Kaldi. He's got to eventually tackle down a win with that Grim Page and Warrior, but looks like he's struggling, floundering a bit. So when Kaldi first had his run through the Legendary Series, I talked with him a lot. And the main subject that we talked about was life. Life, yeah. Philosophy. It really was. The, searching the seven seas, finding we, the seven Dragon Balls. He's from Iceland, and we spent most of our conversation <laughs> talking about American politics. Really? Yeah. He's, he probably schooled you, didn't he? Because he's European and he wears glasses. He really did school me. No, he, we... Um, so I did a lot of research on You're Iceland. Like, ah, you know, I don't want to pay for Obamacare and Cali actually like. He knew more about how... American politics than I did. So what I yeah. did was I went on the internet and I researched as much about Iceland as I possibly could to try and one up him. So it turns out he knows more about America, American politics, and Iceland in general than I do. But I do have a lot of random facts about Iceland now. All right. So uh, tell me the most interesting thing about Iceland that you know. Well. I thought this was interesting. So this was a funny story. As I was reading it, I thought it was an interesting fact, but then I read on, and a lot of countries have this law. In Iceland, you can't spank your children. It's illegal. Wow. Well, thank you. I'm not raising my family in Iceland now. <laughs> you shouldn't raise your family in Canada either. And I guess we have to cancel our trip. <laughs> Canada is a lot more... <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, Canada is a lot more specific. You can't spank your children between the ages of 2 and 12... And it has to be with your hand. You can only spank children if they're between the ages oh, of 2 so and 12. No. Okay, so and no it, it has to be with your hand. It can't well, be with sticks you wish you were or hand. foot. Yeah. Yeah. So this is what I was doing instead of prepping for Hearthstone. I was looking now at random facts. You are facts. prepping for Hearthstone. You were doing this while playing your Patron Warrior yes. on the tablet because you can multitask because you're a boss. Look at this early game draw. Uh, starting to stack up a little bit against the handlock. Kaldi trying to find some ways to play and control the state of the board. He's got the Twilight Drake, which I've been I've been coming around to the idea that maybe you can coin the Twilight Drake for a little bit more board presence preemptively against Grim Patron. I saw a few people do that. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't mind it. In this scenario, it's like so much has been gathered uh, onto the board and that this Acolyte's going to get so much mileage. And he's drawing cards, executed your Drake. And he's going to be able to set up for the eventual Gromosh finish if he even needs it. I mean, he realistically could also have a situation where the Frothing Berserker on turn 7 with a Whirlwind Effect could end the game. Yeah. Emphasis on could because uh, there's a lot of tools in the handlock to make sure that doesn't happen. And Kaldi's like, why does this match feel a lot harder? Than it did for Tom. Right, than the other way around. <laughs> when they, when they literally just flipped sweet seats, right? Yeah. It was Handlock versus Warrior. And it's because it's a combination of things. One, um, Tom got a much better curve. Kali drew three weapons. And then Kaldi also doesn't really have the continual threats the way uh, Tom did. So <laughs> it's a little unfortunate that's what ended up being the case here. No Sylvanas comes out when there's six damage on board already. Emperor Thorson. Makes cards really cheap. Mm. But it's also pretty easily traded into by Sylvanas. Makes him, e it, yeah. him able to control what he steals. Wouldn't you want to trade in everything first then? Like, uh, Acolyte. Okay. YOLO. Yep. Well, he does have potential Power lethal Ragnaros next turn. compels you. Makes you do wild things. Mm -hmm. So next turn, World 1 will cost 0. Unstable Ghoul will cost 1. And Frothing, Berserk, and Warsong Commander will both cost 2. So we can use all those cards, plus have 2 mana left over. And that's a big damage combo there. Especially with multiple things on the board. Right. That Frothing, Berserk can get 10 plus attack pretty easily. Which right. could, like you said, end the game. Any card that you want to steal specifically, probably that Acolyte. 
Is there a way to guarantee it? Dark Bomb, Mortal Coil, the 2 4. No. I, I mean, Armorsmith and Acolyte are both. Because at this point, you, wanna, you might want to start even gaining life. Yeah, but the Acolyte's good because it disarms your opponent from drawing cards. Yeah. Oh, what if you um, Dark Bomb your own Sylvanas after you attack into the No Mission Vendor? Nah, it's just a little bit too cute. He goes for the Steel Plate. Takes no mission vendor. Plays some kind of defensive card. Oh no. Uh oh. Is that game? I think he oh, that is game. Yeah, oh. there's there were 14 health and one damage right now. Each world wins at least three. Each world wins at least four because of Warsong Commander. Okay. L O L. There it is. Oh wait no, he doesn't have enough mana to play. Oh he does. Okay. Because that Warsong Commander costs two now. Yeah, so just yes, whirlwinds, and that should wrap it up. Brutal. Kyle gets 0 3 super quickly, and Tom 60229. Wow. Spanks <laughs> Kaldi because he's above the age of 12. And Kaldi rolls his eyes because he says, <laughs> That would be illegal in my country, sir. But he realized that sometimes that just happens. Smile crosses his face. Sometimes it brings discipline. Of course, Kaldi will not be joining us at the Legendary Series Land Finals. But Tom is going to move on. And uh, I believe he will face Amaz uh, in the semifinals. Ooh, interesting. So the winner between Amaz and Tom will end up getting a ticket. Uh, Amaz still, I guess, reps the Hong Kong, even though he does have that Canadian citizenship. Mm -hmm. uh, still qualifies mainly as a player from Asia. Yeah. And uh, he's he looked pretty strong the last time we saw him playing. He did manage to barely fall against Raynad. And then uh, Amaz still gets that bye here, and he'll be playing the next round. Yeah. So next matchup is going to be Lemmy Jux versus Tuwet. Now, Lemmy Jux, we haven't seen for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, he was with us in week number one, and uh, he was one of the first players eliminated. So it, it really has been a very Quite long time. Quite some time. Yeah. It's been a month. No, two months. Yeah. A, yeah, two months ago was the, the yeah. week one of Legendary Series. And he's on the last day of the Redemption Tournament. Mm -hmm. I didn't get to see too much about Lemmy Jux. Can you tell me a little bit about him? Uh, he had a very poor performance. Um, he well, was, outside of that. But. Yeah, he only went he went one and six. And Ooh, he didn't really, yikes, we didn't really see much score. of him. Yeah, we didn't really see much of him because he just got eliminated in his first two matches. So uh, he, he talked about it in his interview that he had a really good run through the Open, which is, how, of course, how he originally qualified. But it just didn't translate. So he's had a gotcha. long time to reflect. And uh, we'll see if he's going to be able to pull it through. But uh, Lemmy Jux versus Two Wet. The second match of the day is going to come right after this break.